And you could take every one of these healing evangelists that Brian talked about, and every one of them had this attitude that, man, healing was theirs, and they just refused to give in. And I tell you, you got you to gotta have that kind of an attitude. If you got any quit in you, Satan knows it, and he will push you right up until that point. And you've just got to make a decision that I'm not going to back off of this. It's mine. You know, I had a woman, I, I'm from Arlington, Texas, is where I grew up. And I had a woman in Arlington, Texas that started a Bible school. And she had about 10 people, 10 ladies in her Bible school. And anyway, they took Mark 11:23 23 and 24. Verse 24 says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And this woman desired to have Kenneth Copeland as her husband. And so she claimed Kenneth Copeland as her husband. And she dealt with Gloria Copeland being married to Kenneth by saying that, you know, I can have whatever I say. And so they cursed Gloria and commanded her to die. And they were just waiting on her to get out of the way. And they actually had a wedding ceremony in this Bible school where this woman married Kenneth Copeland in the spirit. And then she was just waiting on Kenneth Copeland to get out of the way. I mean, Gloria, so that she could marry Kenneth. Now, most of you, when you hear something like that, you say, ah, that's wrong. Why not? It says whatsoever. Isn't that a whatsoever? Why can't you claim somebody else's mate? Why can't you command your enemy or the person that's standing in the way of your blessing to get out of the way? You say that it's wrong, but why? It, doesn't it say whatsoever things you desire? When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. See, the answer to this is people don't understand that your faith doesn't make God do anything. Faith can only appropriate what has already been provided. Big difference. And God did not provide murder and adultery in his atonement. So you can't make that happen. This is why you can't take Mark eleven twenty four 24 and say, I go rob a bank and I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that I will not be caught in the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's why you can't do that is because God didn't provide thievery for you in the atonement. And if you understand this properly, it takes all of the struggle out of faith because faith isn't something you do to get God to move. Faith is just your positive response to what he's already done. Faith is just how you appropriate. When I was a kid, I got born again when I was eight years old. And the week before I got born again, I went to a vacation Bible school at our church. And my family was like a skunk. We had our own pew <laughs> right down here on the front row. And that was our pew. And I sat on the front row all of the time. But because of Vacation Bible School, we had 600 kids in this thing and they put me in with my group and I was on the very back row of this auditorium, 600 kids in there. And there was a man who took a dollar bill out and this this will tell you how long ago that was. And he held this dollar bill up and he said, I'll give this dollar bill to the first kid who comes up here and takes it. And I thought of all of the times to be at the back of this room. <laughs> And I mean, instantly there was 20 or 30 kids around him just jumping and saying, I want it, I want it. And he just kept his hand in the air and he said, I'll give this dollar bill to the first kid that comes up here and takes it. And we were all wondering, well, all of them want it. And he just kept repeating this over and over. And finally it hit my lightning fast mind what this guy <laughs> was talking about. And I got out and I ran down and I pushed through those other kids and he had his arm up like this and I grabbed his arm and climbed up his side and I grabbed that dollar bill. <laughs> and did you know when I did it, he said, now all of you wanted it, but that's the first kid that came up here and took it. And he used that to illustrate salvation. Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world, but you have to reach out and take it by faith. Your faith doesn't make Jesus die for you. He's already died for you 2,000 years ago before you and I were born, before we had ever sinned. He commended his love toward us in the while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. You, you didn't do anything to earn God's grace. If you can do anything to earn it, it's not grace. But you do have to respond. 
If you don't confess him as your Lord, then you will not receive that salvation that he's provided. It doesn't apply. You have to mix it. You have to mix grace and faith together. And anyway, the reason I'm saying all these things is to, is to illustrate this attitude. That's how you got born again. You didn't come and just say, Father, if it's your will, save me. If that's the way you'd approach salvation, you'd have never gotten born again. But you heard somebody proclaim that it's a done deal. Jesus has already died for your sins. He's already dealt with them. It's not a matter of will he forgive you. He has forgiven you. Will you accept it? And because it was presented to you that way, you reached out and took it. And I can guarantee you that there's sometimes that you don't feel saved. Sometimes that you may have wondered about, man, was I really changed? And yet you just go back to what the word says and you stand on it and you maintain your faith. The scripture says in Colossians 2, 6, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. That means the same way that you got saved is how you get healed. You need to have the same attitude. You need to say, I know that I was healed. You know that you were saved and you don't doubt it. You just stand on it. And you've got to do the same thing with healing. And yet, you know, if people came forward for salvation here today, and if somebody came down here and says, I want to be saved, and if I had a word of knowledge, and I said, man, God showed me you've committed adultery. What makes you think God would save you? Did you know that most people would just cave right then? Like, oh man, I don't deserve salvation. But if they had heard the gospel correctly, that wouldn't keep them from getting saved. They'd say, that's the reason I need to be saved. I know I'm a sinner. And they would go ahead and push beyond that. But you let a Christian come down for healing. And I have a word of knowledge. You got in a fight on the way to church. You got into an argument. And the average Christian would just totally cave. Like, oh, now I know why God's not going to heal me. And it's because you are relating to God on the basis of your own works, your own effort, somehow or another feeling like you've got to deserve it. But you, that's not how you got saved. And that's also not how you get healed. You've got to recognize that it's a done deal. Jesus has already done it. Healing is provided for you. It is the children's bread. The Lord would no more deny you healing than he would deny you salvation. And you ought to no more give in to sickness than you would give in to adultery or lying or stealing. You got to have a, an attitude and rec recognize that God would never deny you. And then you put those two things together and you get this attitude that just literally, it drives the devil away. You resist the devil and he will flee from you. I had a man come to me one time and says, I've done that. I resisted the devil and he didn't flee from me. And I said, so who am I supposed to believe, God or you? <laughs> God says you resist the devil and he'll flee. Well, I resisted the devil. The word resist means to actively fight against. It's the same thing. You got to become violent. You got to get to a place where I will not settle for less than what God has given me. I've got a book entitled Living in God's Best and the first half of the book is all about the number one reason that people don't live in God's best is because they can settle for second best. As long as you can live without God's best, you will. As long as you can live with sickness, you will. As long as you have coping mechanisms and, and that's enough, you will. But man, you just need to get to a place to where I'm shooting for God's best. And I'm not settling for second best. And you got to get this attitude. And I promise you that right there is 90% of the battle. Now there's other things you need to know. But an attitude. Faith is as much attitude as it is action. You got to have this attitude and know that it is a done deal. You know I was going to play a video and I talked too long. We got Donna Jones right here. Where is Donna? I saw it right there. And uh, I was going to play her video and ask her to come up. But anyway, Donna had a brain injury and she just pressed through that thing. And we have 
uh, probably 40 or 45 testimonies on our website. So people raised from the dead, healed of multiple sclerosis, uh, healed of all kinds of things. And, um, and the, number one, the number one thing is this attitude that God, you've provided this for me and I will not settle for less. I'm thinking of this one couple, Bud and Gina Boop. They live in Arizona and uh, Gina had a massive brain aneurysm. And I mean, they drilled a hole in her skull. You could see this hole in her skull and they told uh, Bud that he, she wouldn't get out of the hospital. And Bud, he just got violent. I mean, he called me and I prayed a prayer with him and he would play this prayer with Gina every day. And she was in a coma. And anyway, it's a long, long story, but she just fought and fought and fought. And today she's completely healed. She's been right here in this building and given testimony. I'm thinking of another guy in Michigan who had a car hit him. He in between two cars and they wanted to amputate both legs and he did die and go to heaven and he saw the Lord. But he, he and his wife, they just refused. They told people, if you've got something negative to say, go outside. They told the doctors this. And I've, I've probably got at least a dozen testimonies. A dozen of those testimonies are people who became so radical. They tried to be polite. They told the doctors, I know you're doing what you're called to do and I appreciate it, but if you got something negative to say about my husband or my wife, you go outside. We will not speak death. And did you know when they get that attitude, nearly every time those people get well. But you have people that are in there and they want healing. They're praying for it. They're asking, but they won't stand. Satan is going to come and try and stop you from receiving healing. And if there's any quit in you, he will pursue it until you reach that place. I prayed with a woman one time who had teeth problems and she came on a Saturday night and I prayed with her and she left and didn't feel any different. And on uh, Monday morning, again, I'm not against Dennis. There's a balance to everything I'm saying, but I'll let Randy give the balance. <laughs> I'm not against dentists or doctors. If it hadn't been for the doctors, all the Christians would be dead. So I'm not against doctors. But I'm just saying that on Monday morning, she got up and she was still having teeth problems. And she just said, am I going to keep my dentist appointment or am I going to believe God? And she was in pain. And finally, she says, I believed I received when I prayed. And she canceled her dentist appointment. Within 10 minutes, her teeth were well. As long as you have a thing and this is where I quit, Satan will push you right up to there. But when you get to a place to where I'm not quitting, I refuse to give in. And you get that attitude. I tell you what, that is 90% of the battle right there is just getting violent. The violent take the kingdom by force. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, we got a lot of wimps in the body of Christ that won't stand up to the devil or to the government or to anybody. And they just give in. I'm encouraging you that you need to find out that you have this same power, the power that makes Moses and Abraham and all of these people jealous of what you and I have. If you're the weakest saint in here, you've got more power than all of them. And you need to find out what you've got, find out your authority, find out how it works. But then you need to get angry. And you need to say, I've had all of this I'm going to take. And you go to resisting the devil. You know, when I first got turned on to the Lord, I didn't understand any of the things that I've been describing to you. But I got this attitude. I don't know how, but somehow I just knew that God provided healing for me. And I have seen... I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people heal great things. My own son, my own wife raised from the dead. My son, after five hours dead in a morgue, stripped naked with a toe tag on, a white boy turned black. They called me and we spoke and he rose from the dead and he's alive and well today, praise God. But I just got this attitude about healing 
And I didn't know very much, but you know, a, a blind squirrel will get a nut every once in a while if he doesn't quit. <laughs> I just got to a place where I'm not going to quit. You know, right, Brian was saying that. I saw, saw you now. I didn't see you earlier when I was talking about you. But I, he was talking about how he prayed for 2,000 people before he saw the first one. Now, see, that's an attitude that, uh, that he just wasn't going to quit. And you could take every one of these healing evangelists that Brian talked about and every one of them had this attitude that man, healing was theirs and they just refused to give in. And I tell you, you gotta, you gotta have that kind of an attitude. If you got any quit in you, Satan knows it and he will push you right up until that point. And you've just gotta make a decision that I'm not gonna back off of this, it's mine. Amen. There's much, much more than that, but I tell you, that's something that most people are missing. So I just encourage you that you need to get in and find out what Jesus has done for you. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, All things that pertain unto life and godliness are given unto us through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. And so healing is one of those all things, and it comes through the knowledge of Him. If you are fighting sickness, you got a knowledge problem someplace. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, but you don't understand something. Amen. We need to renew our mind. And I believe as we do that, we're going to see great healings come to pass.